Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are tracking a storm in the Gulf of Mexico and the main development region for possibly developing into tropical storms. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Saturday, September 7th, 2024. Thank you everybody who wished me happy birthday back on Thursday's video. Appreciate that very much. So let's get into this. So we have uh, three red arrows along the East Coast and Gulf Coast of the United States. Those are our non-tropical lows, former Invest 99L and 90L. Uh, they are not likely to develop at this point. They're still along the frontal boundaries, not developing tropically. Then we have the remnants of Disturbance 5 in yellow approaching the Caribbean islands, bringing some squally weather to the Lesser Antilles. And then we have uh, newly designated 91L just crossed the Yucatan Peninsula and moving into the Bay of Campeche uh, by our Black Arrow. And then we have Disturbance 2 in purple still lingering in the main development region as we have very weak tree winds to move this one westward. So here's our vorticity map, the energy and spin in the atmosphere associated with all those that we just discussed. So the three uh, red boxes on the bottom, those are our tropical waves, 91L, right by Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula, is our best chance for developing at this moment. Then we have the tropical wave approaching the Caribbean islands and the main development region, which is stretched out and elongated. Uh, and having a tough time to consolidating that vorticity into something tropical, but still has a chance. And then we have the four yellow boxes. Those are our non-tropical lows along our frontal boundary uh, that are baroclinically developing, not tropically developing. Now, if we look over in Africa, we also have one more tropical wave that has some oomph to it, uh, and that one will eventually catch up to a very slow moving disturbance too in the main development region here and those two uh, together potentially have a chance for development later on uh, it, er, next week. So here is the remnants of 99L moving its way towards Canada bringing some localized impacts here in terms of rain and wind but nothing tropical in nature anymore. Here is 90L's uh, former Invest. As it continues to drift southward, it's going to interact with Invest 91L and help it develop. Here's former Disturbance 5 as it's going to be moving through the Caribbean islands today. So, break, so uh, you could expect some gusty winds and rain in the Lesser Antilles. But here's our main focus at the moment. Since it could be so close to land, we have Invest 91L. It's the blob of thunderstorms to the south of the bigger blob to our to that in, to that top left corner here on your screen. It's got a 40% chance of developing over the next two days and a 60% chance over the next seven days. Now, where is this storm going? Looks to parallel the entire western Gulf Coast from Mexico up to uh, Texas and potentially to Louisiana. So anywhere along this, depending on the actual track of the storm, could be a potential landfall area. But right now, the median black line is taking it towards Galveston Bay and the border of Louisiana and Texas. In terms of intensity, we are potentially could see a strong tropical storm, maybe a weak Category 1 hurricane. There's hints of potential rapid intensification, so we'll keep an eye on that just in case since this is a well-known area for that to happen. And then we also have Disturbance 2. As you can see, this line of stretched out thunderstorms, it's along that cluster of vorticity that's very uh, elongated. The most concentrated is the one towards the left that has the ball of vorticity, but all of this needs to consolidate before becoming anything tropical in nature. So over the next seven days, it's got a 30% chance of doing that, according to the National Hurricane Center. 
So here's the GFS model, looking at the 850 cyclonic vorticity, again, the spend and energy in the atmosphere. The black hexagon is 91L, purple hexagon is disturbance 2. So here's the wind shear right now. You can see all the red associated with our non-tropical lows along the Gulf Coast and East Coast of the U.S. and Canada. And then we have the lighter wind shear environments associated with our two tropical disturbances. So that's protecting it right now from any dry air, especially out in the main development region by disturbance two in purple. Now things start to change in about 48 hours from now. So this is Monday, September 9th. We see disturbance two in the middle of the main development region, slowly concentrating that line of vorticity into a ball. And we also have Invest 91L in the Bay of Campeche, consolidating the vorticity from former 90L to its north, incorporating it into a bowl of vorticity as well. But the better chance is with 90L, 91L developing, as you can see, it's going to have a very robust upper level ridge overhead, which is that perfect scenario for the expellation of uh, rising air in the upper levels of the atmosphere and dispersing it outward, allowing converging air in the lower levels of the atmosphere, creating that circulation pattern for our low pressure system to strengthen. We also see a weaker version of it forming over disturbance number two in purple. And we also see our African wave now starting to emerge off the coast of Africa as well in pink. So here's that light wind shear environment for both of those disturbances, 91L and disturbance 2, with their upper level ridges. That's going to protect it from the Saharan air layer for disturbance 2, just to its north, and the dry air coming down from the Gulf of Mexico behind those cold fronts uh, with our non-tropical lows still riding along them, along the east coast of the United States. So moving forward another day to Tuesday, September 10th, and we see both of them concentrating their bowls of vorticity even more, and that's going to strengthen these storms. Potentially, we could see a tropical storm at this point in the Gulf of Mexico with this with 91L uh, in black here. And then as you can see here on day four, Wednesday, September 11th, we have it getting close to the Rio Grande Valley, not actually making landfall, but just brushing by at this point. So expect some heavy rainfall for the Rio Grande Valley midweek next week. As you can see, both disturbance two and purple and our up, Pink tropical wave are getting closer because the trade winds out here are very weak, not pushing them westward yet. But you can see just to its north that Azores High is starting to get its act together and reorganize so that we'll start to see these storms finally moving westward through the main development region. As you can see here on day five, Thursday, September 12th, we also see that 91L has made its way towards the Louisiana-Texas border at this point and had made landfall in that region. Now, this is just this model run. Like I said, anywhere along the Gulf Co western Gulf Coast could potentially see a landfall from a potential tropical developing system. Depending on the exact track of this storm, it could be in Mexico if it goes further west, Rio Grande Valley, as we saw in the previous slide, very close to a potential landfall. And then as it recurves to the north and northeast, maybe the Galveston Bay, or like in this model, the Texas-Louisiana border. So here's the upper level 200 millibar level uh, atmosphere where we see the low pressure system of 91L has gotten down to a 984 millibar uh, low pressure system, potentially a strong uh, tropical storm or a weak category one hurricane. As you can see, the upper level ridge with disturbance two has disappeared at this moment so it's very weak upper level winds not allowing that system to rapidly intensify as we saw with 91L and that potential rapid application with the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico creating that low wind shear environment could potentially allow this system to strengthen further in my opinion 
just depends on how much land interaction we see with the storm and how rapidly it can get itself organized, incorporating the old vorticity of 90L into 91L. You can still see the light wind shear environment out in the main development region, which is protecting those two tropical waves and eroded away all of that Saharan air layer. So it's more moist out here and now than it was uh, uh, five days from now than it is today. So if this is the case, we'll see potential the areas of the main development region becoming more conducive for tropical development as we see more tropical waves come off the coast of Africa as we get through the middle of September and especially towards the end of September when the MJO tries to swing through. So then by the time we get to a week from now, next Saturday, nine, the remnants of 91L will be moving up the Mississippi River Valley and we'll have two tropical waves approaching the Caribbean islands. So we'll have to keep an eye on them just in case. Here's the European model showing a very similar scenario to the GFS. The combination of 90 and 91L becoming one system before moving up the Texas coastline and our tropical wave in the main development region slowly getting its act together approaching the Caribbean by next week. So here's the ensemble models showing the support for all of our systems where they're going to be going over the next seven days. So we'll keep an eye on 91L and how close it gets to the Mexican coastline or the Texas coastline because depending on the track like I said could be a landfall in any of those regions the sooner, the weaker the storm, the longer, the stronger the storm. So if it gets towards Louisiana, potentially we could be talking about a hurricane impact. And then Disturbance 2 will take some time to consolidate its uh, stretched out vorticity, uh, but the wind shear environment out here is low, so we'll see if it makes any impacts with the Caribbean islands next week, as well as the tropical wave behind it, which is still over Africa today. Next name on the list would be Francine, and if both were to develop, we could see Gordon as well. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.